Hey everyone, welcome back to Pawpaw's Workshop. Well, I've had the Fox Alien XC Pro now for several weeks and have done quite a few different small projects on it and I absolutely love it. It is a great machine. One of the things that I'd like to be able to do today is make this great machine even better by installing the upgraded linear rail kit. And this is gonna be a lot of fun to be able to do. Now it is gonna require pretty much taking this machine apart to be able to add the linear rails to it but it's really not a complicated process. Now, with this upgraded kit, it does have a manual. We're going to be following this manual today to be able to install the linear rails to be able to make sure that everything goes smoothly. And I'm going to take you step by step through the whole entire process. The metal wheels that are on the Fox Allen XD Pro are much better than the typical plastic wheels that you see. However, putting the linear rails on is going to be even better. When you first got the XE Pro by Fox Alien, you probably noticed on the Y1 and Y2 rails as well as the gantry, these holes that are pre-drilled and tapped. Well, these are for the linear rails and it makes it so easy to be able to upgrade because all of these holes are drilled and tapped ready to be able to receive the linear rails. Notice there's also a metal ridge that the linear rails will slide right up against, which makes the alignment so easy. The first step that I'm going to do is remove the drag chains from the y-axis and also the x-axis and set that aside. And I'm going to save the screws so that I'll be able to put them back in once it's time to reassemble the machine. You're going to find out that quite a few of the parts that you have currently on the machine are going to be reused. And that includes the screws and some of the other major components. So you want to be very careful not to lose any of the screws. And what I would suggest is put those screws right back in where they belong. That way you can find them and you know where they are. The next step is to be able to unplug all of the wires. Now be very careful with the stepper motors. Do not pull on the wires. What I typically would do will just have a little screwdriver that will help release the little tabs so that I can gently pull the plug off of the stepper motors. And yes, you're going to need these little screws to hold the drag chain. So now it's time to be able to get the drag chain out of the way. Now I'm still leaving everything plugged into the controller and all the cables are just going to gently be placed right here out of the way while we do the work on the CNC machine itself. The next step is to remove the Z assembly. And the way to do that is you're going to remove these four screws. And what I would suggest is get all of the screws loose and then remove the bottom screws first and then take out the top screws. Now remember, this is a little bit heavy. So you want to be very careful not to drop this as you take out that last screw. Again, replace the screws back into this plate. You will be using this plate again. Now it's time to remove the gantry itself. And to be able to do that, you need to remove the six screws that are on each side. So these six screws are located right here and save them because you'll be reusing them. Once all the screws are out, this will just easily lift up and off. Now the next step, we're going to remove the Y1 and the Y2 axis. And we're going to do so by removing these four screws on each end. Also, you'll need to remove the limit switches and set them aside as well. As you're removing these screws to hold the Y1 and the Y2 axis, you guessed it, save these screws, you'll be needing them again. But once they're all out, just lift this up and out and you can re easily remove it. Now it's time to disassemble this part so that we can actually get this off of the rails. Most of these components actually are not being reused, so you can set these aside. But again, remember, you'll need to save the screws, washers, and the lock washers. Here's a close-up look at the flat washer, the lock washer, and the screw that holds that part in. As far as these wheels, you really only need to take off two of the wheels, and that will release everything so that you can take the rest of this part off of the Y1 and the Y2 axis. Now it's time for the fun part. It's time to begin installing the linear rails themselves. They come in a sealed package, and you can just easily slip them out and drop them on the Y2 and the Y1 axis. These holes will align perfectly with the pre-drilled and tapped uh, screws holes that you have in 
the axis themselves. Now you're going to find that there's quite a bit of oil that's on these rails. You might want to consider using some rubber gloves to be able to keep your hands clean. Now this is also a good time to be able to take off the z-axis assembly off the gantry because we need to install the linear rails to this. You also have a bag of screws that is the M412 bolts. There's 64 pieces to be able to install the linear rails. The most important part is to make sure that this is all aligned properly. My suggestion is to put the first screw in on one end of the rail and then put the second screw in on the opposite end. That will help the alignment. Also, make sure that the rail itself is right up against that ridge. This will help ensure that you have the proper alignment. Once you have these two screws in, the rest is pretty easy. You can literally just drop these in to the slot and screw them in. You should have perfect alignment at this point. On the gantry itself, you have to be able to turn it over because you have a linear rail that attaches to the bottom also. Now the next part is not part of the instruction, but this is something that I like to do. You need to be able to grease these bearings. There's a little screw on each end of these bearings and you can just take this out and then add a little bit of the grease. And I'll put a link to the grease that I use on my CNC machine down in the description below. But I have this little needle valve attachment that goes onto the end of the grease gun. Then I can slip it directly into that hole and be able to apply the grease. Now these bearings need to be greased at roughly about a 200 hour uh, increment somewhere in that vicinity to be able to keep these running smoothly. I'm only adding just a little bit of grease to these and then I'll be able to put the screw back in and I know that I'll be good for at least 200 hours or more of use on this CNC machine. Now it's time to assemble this assembly. They provided this PVC card that gives you the proper thickness and that acts as a spacer. So you can set that right down on top of those bearings and you can get the perfect alignment. These are the M410 bolts to be able to uh, screw this in and you can see by sliding this left to right you can get the perfect alignment to those holes. And then simply just drop the screws into the holes. You have the alignment already established so all that's left is just tighten the screws once the screws are all tightened, all you have to do is just remove that little PVC card and you have your alignment that you need, spacing is correct, and the job is done. And repeat the process on the other Y-axis. Now that we have this on, we need to put this plate on and you can see how these holes will line up with this and these need to be where this will go right in here. And to attach it, we need to use the M5, and we'll use the M512 bolts. Now this is just a personal preference, but I like putting in the center screw first in this. That way, if this one is screwed in, then I can pivot the plate to be able to establish the alignment on the other two screws. It's not absolutely necessary to do this. This is something that I just find that it's easier for me to be able to do. Next, I want to take and lay this Y-axis on its side. And I'm going to make sure there's nothing underneath that. We'll get everything out of the way. But I need to attach this plate now to this component. And to do this, I'll need the screw, the lock nut, and the washer to be able to attach that. And that will just slide right over and you're going to notice the alignment is perfect. To attach this assembly, I'm using the original screw, lock washer, and the flat washer to attach this. Now one thing I haven't mentioned in this whole process, anytime I'm putting an assembly together, I always put the screws in loose to begin with. That just helps to be able to align the remaining screws. Once they're all in place, then I can tighten them. And if you do that as a best practice, throughout the entire build, it's going to make it a lot easier. The Y1 and the Y2 axis are now finished. I'm going to bring them back over to the base of the CNC machine and reattach them with those same four screws on the front and the back. Again, I want to emphasize, put in all four of the screws on the front and the back to ensure your alignment. 
Once they're all in, then come back and tighten all the screws. If you'll use this as a best practice for any of the projects that you have, you'll find that it's much easier. Next, I want to reinstall the limit switches on the Y1 axis. I have those laying aside. The screws were right there already in the limit switches, so it makes it real easy to attach. On the gantry itself, with this assembly, this back plate is reused from the original machine. And again, I'm putting the limit switches back in place. The bracket that's used for the drag chain, I never removed. To install this back plate on the gantry itself, I'm using the exact same method that I had used on the Y1 and the Y2 axis. The first bearing is attached, and now I'm attaching the second one. And I can literally just slide it in, align it, and drop the screws in. You have this extra plate that comes in the kit that needs to be attached to the bottom. That way you can actually attach the linear bearings to this. And again, you'll have another one at the top to do the same thing. It's time now to put that front plate on. Now this front plate is from the original setup. You can see my four screws that are still in there from the Z-axis. So I can drop this down in position, put the screws in, and tighten it. Now I'm close to having this machine back together, but one of the things that the instructions calls for is to be able to test each axis separately and run that with the computer on to see if there's any binding or problem. That way you'll be able to easily identify any problem because you're only doing one axis at a time. Now as far as the Y1 and the Y2 axis, I'm also running those separately. So currently I have the Y2 motor connected and the Y1 motor is not connected, nor is the X axis connected at this point. So I'm gonna move only on one axis, and I'm using the open build software to be able to control the machine. Now I just open this up, and of course I have the alarm, so I'm going to click that, and now I should be able to move this. So if I move this, let's just say one inch, and we'll move that. So you can see that that is moving. That is what I'm looking for. So that works good. I'm going to connect to Y1 next. I disconnected the Y2 and I connected to Y1 and running the test. I want to run this the full distance of the linear rail to make sure that there's no binding. So that runs good. Now I connected the Y1 and the Y2 to be able to run those. So that's all good. Now it's time to connect the X axis. We'll run the X axis. So that all runs really good. There's no binding on any of the axes, so I like that. So at this point, the test was successful. There was no binding, or there was no problems, or weird noises. Now that little dull sound that you could hear, that is actually perfectly normal. So the test was successful, running each axis totally separate, and of course separating, separating out the Y1 and the Y2 axis also. So with this test successful, now I can finish putting the machine together. Now one note, if there was binding and there was a problem, then you can take the screws on the linear rail itself and be able to make some adjustments. When you install the gantry back onto the Y1 and the Y2 axis, be very careful of the limit switches. Now I have the wires out of the way, but you have to be careful on your machine and make sure that the wires on the limit switches are out of the way so that you do not take a chance on pinching them and damaging the wire. Also at this point you can take the six screws that you originally had in the gantry and put them back into place. Now do not tighten them. We still need to make sure that this uh, gantry is perpendicular to the wasteboard itself. Another step that you can do, now that our test was successful and we know that our linear rail is in place, 
you can double check, make sure that they're tight, and take these little green plugs and put them into position. And I take the end of the screwdriver and push just slightly to make sure that they are below the surface of the linear rail, and that's all that's necessary. And you can do this for all of them. I want to make sure that you understand that it is critical to make sure that this gantry is perpendicular to the wasteboard itself. You can use a light to shine to be able to see the gap, and you can also take a piece of paper and stick it between it. Now in this case, there's a slight gap at the top, so I need to rotate this gantry forward just a little bit, and then I'll tighten a screw on each side and recheck it. Now take your time with this process. You do not want to rush it. You want to make sure that this is right. This is what causes the ridges when you're doing the surfacing of the wasteboard or surfacing of your project, if this is not correct. So as you can see here, I need to rotate this just a little bit more because there was a small gap still at the top. So I'm going to rotate it one more time and then tighten the screw and double check it. Now if this method didn't work, the alternative is when you put the z-axis on, you can also use a little washer at the top or the bottom, whatever is necessary. And when I use the light test and holding this up, this looks good. It's touching down to bottom but it's still just ever so slightly off at the top. Now the light test works real good. It helps to have a dark triangle, but I can also use the paper and try to force that down. And the paper is tight here. And I have just a tiny, tiny little bit there. So that is very, very, very close. So at this point, I'm going to tighten up all six screws on each side. All of these are now tight. I'm going to take these screws out and attach the drag chain. At this point, I can reconnect the wires and I'm connecting the limit switches first and then I'll plug in the wires to the stepper motor. When I plug these wires in, you're going to see a green light turn on when I connect the power. That's an indication that they're working and connected. Next, I'm going to add the rail to be able to support the cable for the x-axis. And of course, the screws are there. I don't have to hunt for them. They're ready and waiting for me. So at this point, real easy, I can just put this up, screw it in, tighten it, and attach the drag chain next. And because I put these screws in here, there's no problem with trying to hunt them down or think that you misplace them because they're right handy. So now we'll just put that up there. So that's one. Now these are still loose and I have the movement here and that's okay. The movement is okay, but I needed to tighten the screws just a little bit more so that I could twist it left and right on the x-axis, but it would hold position. I'm using the triangle again to be able to get the perfect alignment. I'm going to tighten this bottom screw just a little bit more. I'm checking the top. It looks real good. I'm going to tighten this opposite screw on the top and then I'll check it with the paper. And that's awesome. That looks really, really good. So at this point, I can completely tighten these two screws that are already in place, and I can put the remaining two screws in and tighten them. One last check just to make sure that nothing moved, and it looks great. So at this point, all that's left is just to reconnect these wires to the spindle and to the stepper motor limit switches, and we're ready to test this machine out with everything back together. At this point, at the computer, I'm going to select Home, and it's going to go through the homing cycle. Now, I got an error, and but it didn't actually stop the machine. But it starts to go through the rest of the homing cycle, 
it gets to the point and it does stop. So it did trip a limit switch. There's only one limit switch that it could trip and that's on the Z axis. So we need to take a look at that. There is a problem there that we need to correct. Now this little wheel on this switch is hitting here and that's what's causing a problem. I tried to push this back with these loose and the top one tightens, but this one will not tighten. There is just a regular little nut on the back side that I need to be able to tighten and I can't do that. So the only choice that I have is to take off this little mechanism, tighten this screw on the back side, and then put it back on. To make it easier to be able to show you in the camera exactly what I'm doing, I'm disconnecting the limit switch. Now I can work on it and show you in the camera exactly what's happening. You can see that this nut just spins. So I'm gonna get a little pair of pliers and tighten that and we'll put it back on. Now I can just hold that right there and then tighten this. And that's all that's necessary. And I'll make sure that this one is tight also. And it is. So now I'll put this back on and adjust it. One additional step that I could have done is use Loctite. If I use Loctite on the threads, I would want to use the blue, not the red. The blue allows you to be able to remove that nut should you need to in the future. If you use the red, that eh, is pretty much permanent. It's going to be very difficult, if not impossible, to be able to remove that nut. So at this point now, this is very loosely attached and I want to be able to adjust it. To adjust it is simply a matter of moving this forward and back so that the limit switch itself, that little small wheel on the arm, does not touch that metal plate. Then I can tighten the two screws and we can test it to make sure that it's going to work properly. So with that adjusted, let's home the machine now. So that solved the problem. The machine is all back together and this little issue has been resolved. Now there's one last check that I want to make on this to make sure that this gantry is square to the X axis. And I can put this right here and measure over to this point. Now this is not actually started here, but that doesn't matter. It's just a reference. And that is exactly on four centimeters or 40 millimeters. You can check it on the other side. And by checking it over here, that's exactly the same. I know that this gantry now is perfectly square to the Y1 and the Y2 axis. Just to double check to make sure that everything is working correctly, I'm going through the homing cycle one more time. If the homing cycle is successful, then I'm going to move the spindle throughout the full working area of the machine just to make sure that there is no problem, no binding of any sort on this machine and I'll be ready for the first project. You can clearly see the homing cycle was successful. Now I'm going to put it through the full motion of the machine. I am moving on the x-axis 400 millimeters and now I'm going to come up on the y-axis 400 millimeters as well and continue to form the entire circle around the working area of this machine and you can see that everything is working perfectly as it should so I'm very happy with this upgrade. The upgrade is complete and I really appreciate you following along on my journey to be able to upgrade the Fox Alien XE Pro to the linear rails. Now that I know that everything is working properly and we've tested it thoroughly, I can't wait to do the first project. So I hope you enjoyed this video today. I look forward to seeing you real soon in the next project. And 
we're going to be putting this to the test doing some projects here in the shop. So for now, bye-bye. Can't wait to see you real soon.